This is Priscilla White from St Faith and St Lawrence Church in Harborn in Birmingham with worship for the 18th of April. If you're watching this via our website or Facebook or Twitter, you should have found a handy link to take you to the order of service. If you don't have access to that, there will be subtitles appearing for the responses so you can join in with those. We take a few moments of quiet to remind ourselves that although dispersed, we are in a sense gathered in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The opening responses reflect the preciousness and the greatness of the love of God. How precious, O Lord, is your unfailing love. We find refuge in the shadow of your wings. We feast, Lord Jesus, in the abundance of your house and drink from your river of delights. With you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Our first hymn, Jesus Lives, Thy Terrors Now. as we open up to God in worship, our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Lord God, we have sinned against you. 
we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As those who know themselves to be forgiven, those of us who know that God loves us and reminds us of his love, Let's hear the words of Gloria in Excelsis. collect for today. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So this is the point in the service where I would, I will normally and will today say pause your video and read the readings for yourself, reflect on them a little bit and then come back to hear my own reflection and to continue with the service. The readings, which you can read either from the order of service or from a Bible, are Acts chapter 3 verses 12 to 9 and Luke chapter 24, 36b to 48. So pause, read, reflect and then come back. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. John Barton, Oxford professor and my Old Testament tutor back in the day, has recently written a book describing the story of the Bible, its interpretation, its coming into being, and the place it's held in the life of the world. It's called The History of the Bible, and was recently broadcast in an abridged version on BBC Radio 4 very detailed and has a very wide scope, but it's an interesting read if you feel you want to give it a go. He begins his introduction by quoting Northrop Fry, a Canadian literary critic who wrote of the Bible. This huge, sprawling, tactless book sits there inscrutably in the middle of our cultural heritage, frustrating all our efforts to walk around it. Up until very recently, 
we could regard the Bible as central to cultural literacy. So even for those for whom the Bible held no importance theologically, would know and understand at least to some extent many of the stories in the broad sweep of the narrative. Now, however, that biblical literacy is declining fast. And what is more worrying, even within churches and among people in the pews? The Bible is foundational to our faith. We may treat it differently from different traditions, but it's still important to all of us. And how we engage with it will enable us to grow and develop in our discipleship and in the way we follow Jesus. In this reading from Luke, we have a picture of Jesus enabling his followers to understand and grow in their knowledge of who he was. We read, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. In a room together with his friends, he could sit and teach them and begin to unpack for them his significance, to help them to begin to understand the way in which they will carry forward the truth about himself. Perhaps the 40 days between Easter resurrection and his ascension were a sort of intensive summer school for the disciples, taking them through the scriptures they knew and pointing out the resonances between Jesus and the tradition within which they'd grown. Could be a bit speculative that, but it may be so. The phrase he opened their minds to understand the scriptures echoes the phrase in the reading immediately preceding, where two disciples on the road to Emmaus, confused and discombobulated, are walking. Jesus draws alongside them and speaks with them. We read, Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. When they get to the village, we understand, they invite him to stay with them. And we read that he blesses the bread and breaks it and gives it to them and then vanishes. And then the text says, they say to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? For the disciples, their scriptures would have been similar to what we call the Old Testament. But it's important to understand that they did not have them in the form of an easily accessible book, as we do. There would have been scrolls in the synagogue, scrolls of Torah, of prophets and of writings. So the keynote, I think, here is about opening the scriptures, enabling deeper and greater understanding. So how do we do that? Well, one way, of course, is what I'm doing now, speaking about scripture, explaining a passage, a verse or a concept and providing food for thought, hoping that people will engage with what I say and carry it forward beyond the service into their life in the coming week. And then, of course, there's our own individual engagement with scripture. We can read a short passage each day, reflecting on what it means, what God might be saying to us. We can use apps or Bible notes to help with background information. There will always be parts that we find harder to understand, but there will always be things that stand out for us and help us to deepen our spirituality and grow in following Jesus. Or again, we can come together to study in a group. That can be a helpful way of learning from one another. The reading mark groups we're holding on Tuesdays and Thursdays are a way of engaging with scripture and opening it up in a non-threatening way. Now we're doing this by using a process called the discovery method, which helps us to dig deeply into the text and find within it our call for the week ahead. We read the passage twice, then we get someone to retell it in their own words. By the time we've done all of that, we become very familiar with the text. We then follow it with five questions. What does the passage say about God? What does it say about humanity? What does it say about obedience? In the light of what we now know about the passage, what is God calling you, me, to do? I will do this in the coming week. And who will you share the story with this week? There's also obviously opportunity to bring in some insights that we may have from other places. But it's a very focused way of looking at the text. I would really commend the groups to you. And if you can't attend via Zoom, 
you can still do the studies on your own using the leaflet found on the website. But the advantage of doing it together is that we spark off one another and we gain from the insights of others. I learn so much studying the Bible with other people. We discover as we go that there are a few wrong answers, but many right ways to be stirred by the opening of Scripture together. Scripture is there for us to grow. It's there for us to learn and understand more deeply what God calls us to. It's there because it tells the story of the way in which God reaches into the world and offers hope. The Bible is central to faith, not our only source of understanding, but a key to our lives. Our liturgy, our worship is steeped in it and culturally it still can hold an enormous sway in important ways. So I close with the prayer for Bible Sunday. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue the Easter theme, the anthem is This Joyful Easter Tide. This And so we declare our faith based firmly on resurrection. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen.
So with those words of hope ringing in our ears, let's take some time for prayer. Again, the idea is that you pause the video and pray for the things that you want to pray for for a little while and then come back and join in with the Lord's Prayer in the end of the service. It's normal to pray for issues around the world, for the church, for our community, and for those we know who need our prayers particularly. So do that, and then join again. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So as we share a sign of peace, if you're able to, or simply sit for a moment and reflect on those with whom you would love to share Christ's peace. And the next hymn, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, hearts to heaven and voices raise.
our closing responses remind us that as we finish sitting intentionally in the presence of God, we ask God to accompany us as we go on the next phase of our day and of our journey. Lord Jesus, inspire us with your grace. Send us forward on our journey. Lord Jesus, inspire us with your love. Send us forward on our journey. Lord Jesus, inspire us with hope. Send us forward on our journey. And so may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>